Radio Show with your host, Bonnie Clark. We stand together and accept that we now live in a world transformed by Fukushima. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time here on UCY.TV Radio. We relentlessly engage every year that listens. We expose and confront the complete lack of accountability for the nuclear industry. Consider social engineering programs who view our bodies, minds, and souls as assets on a balance sheet. We discuss vital current issues, interview activists, and engage our audience in an effort to allow all voices to be heard. The Age of Vision Radio Show creates a venue that all will choose. We encourage our listeners to reclaim their power and their courage to take action and save our planet from the ravages of greed and indifference. Our actions matter. Every voice matters. We remind our listeners that happiness is resistance. Love is greater than fear. Good morning, UCY.TV radio listeners. This is Lonnie Clark with the Age of Fission radio show. Today is August 26, 2016. I cannot believe it's almost September. Uh, you're listening to UCY.TV radio, and today is Call-In Friday. Uh, thank you for listening to the rerun last week. I escaped with my family. Uh, I actually did not have time to connect with Dana Durnford to have him join me today as a guest host. I hope to be able to next week. I've had kind of a busy week. So let me give you our phone number out in case anybody wants to call us right away. The number is 718-717-8296. And I thought I'd just talk to you today about... The impending sense of doom I think everybody has. I mean, there is just, we're living in a country right now that is just off its rocker, to be really honest. I mean, we're learning now, as uh, Richard McKenna said to me, he kind of laughed when I told him I believed in the election cycle. Uh, Yeah, I actually really did prior to this uh, last few months. I really believe that we still had a chance in our country to take our government back, but considering we have the media is just whitewashing everything, selling us, shoving whatever agenda they want. I mean, I actually now listen to, uh, while I'm working, I tune in and out to the mainstream media just to listen to the talking points throughout the day. And you can actually, on every single network, hear the same phrases coming out of everybody's mouth on the mainstream media in the United States. It is just uh, shocking that Americans are willing to take it. That's This is the thing that I can't believe. We have the EPA who is about to raise the rate. The, our Environmental Protection Agency is going to raise the radiation limits in the event of a nuclear meltdown. Instead of warning us that there's a nuclear meltdown, the radiation rates just get raised and they don't raise the alarm. Uh, That's incomprehensible. That's actually a crime against humanity. This whole uh, nuclear priesthood lie that nuclear is just not that harmful. It's like a banana or a potato chip, and you have to just get so much for it to actually even begin to harm your body is a complete lie, a 100% verifiable lie. And as citizens of the world, you know, I'm just dumbfounded that people are not standing up and speaking out, that they kind of shy away and don't want to talk. They like shake their head, yeah, you're right. If you happen to talk to them about it, a lot of people now will agree. They'll say, yeah, yeah, yeah. But do they want to get together, protest in the street, do any kind of action? 
mostly not. As me and Kevin Blanche found out, I mean, Kevin traveled around the country and, in fact, around the globe, and people listened to his YouTube channel, but nobody showed up in the streets. We need millions of people in the streets. Uh, September 1st is coming up, folks. September 1st is day 2000 of Fukushima, nonstop nuclear meltdown for a long, 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 long time, 2,000 days, nonstop. We have a nonstop nuclear meltdown, three of them, at least, if not four, going on in Fukushima right now, while our governments are planning on putting on the Olympics in Japan, right down the road. And in Chiba, which is, I guess, south of Fukushima, there's going to be surfing. They're going to put surfing in for the very first time. Has this planet just hit its rocker, or we just want to pretend that we're infants and we really just don't know, or that it's not our responsibility, or that the technologists have the right to lie to us? Where's our sense of responsibility? I mean, you know, if anybody wants to talk to me about this issue, the phone number is 718-717-8296. You know, a lot of times on people say, well, aren't you just like, you know, pissing in the wind? I mean, don't you feel like you're not getting anything done? Uh, actually, when you go to the mass animal death list and you look at what is going on, you kind of feel that way. Let's look at it today. Mass animal death list, 2016, August 25th. Hundreds of tons of fish suddenly die in a reservoir. Sragan, Indonesia. August 25th, 1 million plus, 1 million plus, folks. they just saying plus. Wow. Dead fish wash up in Jersey, America. Wow. Let's open that one up and see what, she gives us the link to all of this. Wow, this is really a million fish plus. Hmm. What are they going to tell us about this one? Yeah, it's clearly a million fish. You should see the picture, folks. It's like piles and piles and piles of fish. Wow. Where was this? Keensburg, New Jersey. The fish kill cleanup in Kingsburg finished Thursday morning as state officials increased their estimate of dead bunkers more than a million. Wow. Keensburg Mayor George Hoff said public works crew picked up the last of the peanut bunker that washed on shore in Wakaak Creek with, with Thursday morning's high tide. Wow. Let's see if I can glean more information from this. Crews from Keensburg picked up 5,000 pounds of fish from the creek and surrounding waterways and stored them in a 30 cubic yard container. It will cost more the borough $1,100 to dump the load at the landfill. Wow. I guess that's a lot of money for a little tiny town. You should see the picture of it. My goodness. And yet, huh, people are like, well, you know, that's just what we're, we're living with the pollution. That Pollution is like climate change, isn't it? Pollution, climate change, it's something out there. It's not us. It's not us. Uncomprehensible. It's incomprehensible, folks. 18,000 plus cattle died due to cold extremes in Areca. Arequipa, Arequipa, Peru. Twenty August twenty second, thousands of dead fish found in North Carolina, America. Thousands. I wonder what that real estimate is. August twenty second, one hundred and fifty pounds of fish turn up in Angdao, China. August twentieth, thousands of fish die to the un, due to the unprecedented parasite in Yellowstone River, America. Thousands of fish, unprecedented parasite. Uh huh. 
You know, actually, uh, Tim Martin, who I'm hoping that I can get uh, some time on this radio show, he's an activist here in Eugene, or in, in Oregon. I think he lives down in Medford, Oregon. And he was a, sa you know, he, he sold boats, I guess, big salmon boats. And he has experience selling to truckers. He's a, a salesman of big machines like that. He was an avid. He's been, uh, he's from Oregon avid salmon fisher, uh, loved salmon. When I met him about a year and a half ago, Kevin Blanche gave me his phone number because we're both in Oregon, so we should connect. And um, his entire life has been turned around by this. There are no fish. There are fish that he has. Uh, the fish that are out there have sores on them. He's talked to fishermen who say, yeah, they have salmon with sores. They just cut them out and process the fish. So you think you could eat a fish with cancer in it and cut out the cancer sore and not get cancer from that fish, folks? Does that make sense? I mean, Tim is kind of heartbroken. He calls me once or twice a week from Medford and is just astounded by the information he finds out down there. And he follows the fisheries. I've, to be frank, I've attempted to follow the fisheries, but I don't speak that language. That's a, yeah, that's a whole other language. All of that hunting and fishing stuff. Uh, I do know that when we went up to the coast last Sunday, there was very little, and I mean, very little fish that we could see. There was. We went out to the tidal pools. Kevin Finnegan and I went out to the tidal pools on Sunday morning. We got out there at 8.30, and I was dumbfounded. We went out to Hecata Beach in Oregon. And I called Tim later that day, and we were dumbfounded because that's a its a sweet little cove. In, let me explain to you the Oregon coast. It's kind of a harsh coast. It's not like the beach in Southern California where you go in the sun and you have this beautiful coast and it's frolicking. No, in Oregon, the weather is harsh. It's always windy. It's always cold. Uh, even on a warm day, it's a harsh, it's a harsh environment. And so w there's this little cove called Hecata Beach, and it's uh, really beautiful because the ocean comes in, the waves aren't too hard, uh, it's surrounded by some caves and mountains and big rocks that the first time I went there was covered with seals and birds. So when I went back with Kevin last Sunday, I was kind of dumbfounded. We were there early in the morning at the tidal pools, and there were really maybe 50 birds 30 birds, but I mean the whole the whole little cove used to be just covered with seabirds when I was there three or four years ago. And it is an astounding fact. What happens is it's our normalcy bias, folks. People don't see it because it's our normalcy bias. We read stories about mass animal deaths, and it's shocking. But you, if you we were to go to North Carolina or to any of this place, New Jersey, this little town, that I, this little, ti little tiny town, a million dead fish washed up. What does that say about that environment? Yeah, they're cleaning it up, but why are they dead? How long will it take the EPA, every polluter's advocate, to find out why those fish died? I mean, the EPA must be completely overwhelmed with uh, things to do. I mean, think about the, if we actually had an educated populace, if we actually encouraged our students to go to school and created real science, we might actually be able to resolve these issues, figure out how to stop the chemical and nuclear pollution, how to reverse it, instead of destroying people's lives, like Tim, Tim Martin, his life is destroyed. He no longer, he was actually called me this week heartbroken. He's selling his fishing gear. Last last week or the week before, he sold his boat. He's getting out of it completely. There's no way he can go fishing. And he said, besides that, when you go out, it costs a lot of money to go out fishing. There's no fish. There's very little fish out there. There's just not like it used to be. And he's heartbroken. He recognizes it. And he is actually being ridiculed by people around him. Even the far, even the the fisherman that he's spoken to this weekend, and I have to apologize to Tim. He sent me a little quick thirty second video that I haven't posted on YouTube yet, with a fisherman saying, "Yeah, he used to he used to go down to the out in Medford and buy I think it was Gold Beach. He 
they this fisherman was telling Tim he would buy 20, 30 fish from every boat that came in. Now, in the last few months, he's bought one or two because there's just no fish. There's actually signs down there that says, don't eat the clams. Um, uh, from Suislaw River, which is three-fourths of the way up uh, the Oregon coast, it's by Hecate Beach, that's where I was, all the way down to the California coastline. That's the warning. There's warning signs along the coast that says that. Now, our normalcy bias, we go to the beach and we see 20, 30 birds. You know how many starfish we saw? Two. We saw two starfish clinging to the rocks in the tidal pools. And only one type of sea amenity. M and E, or however you say that word. And who invented that word anyways? So anyways, if anybody wants to give me a call and talk about any of this, the phone number is 718-717-8296. Today's call-in Friday. I'd love to have you give me a chat. It's always great to engage with our audience wherever you are. And um, let me get back to this because I honestly am dumbfounded at the complacency like people act they're talking about this whole Trump Clinton blah 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 like as if that's real at all folks I mean honestly I've had a pretty good spanking on this one this last year it's been hard I you know I'm 60 years old and I like the comeuppance I've had on this one I actually really did believe that our vote did matter up until this election. I really honestly, like, I knew that Bush stole the general election in 2000, 2001, and I knew that, that why they did it was mission accomplished. He clicked his heels and said, yes, the bankers were getting their way. Obvious. But I have to say that I'm shocked that the Democrats would go along with the banksters, and it made me realize that we really only have one party in this country, and that's called the Republicrats, and rats being the operative part of the word. And this is just like the United Soviet States of America, where only the right count votes, and the state-run media operates and says exactly what they want to say. And if anybody deviates it, you are considered a social outcast. And welcome to UCY.TV. <laughs> so, uh, I'd rather be in this position and have us be the ones who actually speak out for integrity and honor and honesty and what it means to be our American values. That's what I think our American values are all about. You know, um, I... I've had people argue with me that uh, there, I should not cling to the identity of a citizenship or that kind of thing. Um, I don't think we can get around it. I think we might resent it, but I think we, ha you know, every, our nation has been formed by our past history, and we're having the comeuppance, man. This has been murder, death, kill since day one. Uh, you know, it's just astounding. And we must grow as a planet, as a nation, as a humanity, as a people. Completely backwards. The world is completely upside down on its head. August 22nd, 2016. 150,000 pounds. How many millions of pounds is that? 150,000 pounds. Dead in China. Wow. Let's see if I can find on this list uh, any of the, because um, we always do find them, dead turtles. 55 dead turtles found in La Paz, Mexico. You know how sad that is? You know how long turtles live? 28 dolphins and four sea lions found, on, oh, in Lambayeque, Peru. I've been there to Lambayeque, Peru. It is a disgustingly smelly fish town. That's where they produce uh, some tuna or something there, and it is, yeesh. So it must have been really sad to find these dead sea lions. 28 dead dolphins. Could you imagine waking up in the morning and finding 28 dead dolphins on the beach where you live? You're living in a smelly little piss-poor dirt town off the coast of Peru, northern Peru, and it smells like fish anyways, and you go out to the beach, and then you just find these dead animals littering the entire coastline up and down for five or six miles. 
That's just outrageous. I mean, it's just, I don't know how we can live with ourselves, folks. We just, our silence is complicity. Silence is complicity in this. It's like pe- these, I, I mean, honestly, I, I, I'm i dumbfounded by the mainstream media and these people out there talking about Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton as if they are, A, rational human beings, and B, not criminals. I mean, both of them are criminals. <sighs> it is so outrageous. And yet, people continue to go about their lives, and I think that has to do with the normalcy bias. You know, uh, I was listening to Ray McGovern, who I have reached out to. I don't know if he'll agree to come on our show, but Ray McGovern, I don't know if anybody know about him, but he's an ex-CIA agent. He's the guy who stood up to Rumsfeld and Hillary Clinton. He got manhandled. He's a 75-year-old man who was manhandled by the CIA when he asked Hillary Clinton something at one of her press conferences as Secretary of State. Uh, He stood up to Rumsfeld and confronted him when Rumsfeld was in power. That's, I think that's when he actually woke up, according to his biography on his uh, web page, which is raymcgovern.com. But I was listening to him, and, he, and the, the um, radio host asked him, what can we do? What, what can we do? We have all this corruption. I mean, Ray was an ex- is an ex-CIA agent who was, it has become astounded at how out of control our CIA really is. And he has started taking political action, getting arrested, uh, you know, and he's actually gotten manhandled quite a few times by the police. And I, you know, I've had people tell me they think it's like uh, controlled opposition, but I believe his efforts are genuine as an honest person uh, from everything I've seen him talk about. But he says what we need is small groups of people to get together, formulate a small group, get together once a week or something and figure out how to take actions and start pushing back in your own little local area. I guess it's the uh, Bernie Sanders idea of uh, activism, you know. I mean, uh, this week there's been a lot of talk about Bernie Sanders campaign for revolution and uh, most of his primary staffers quit when he put in a guy who wants to take big money from the big coffers. So, so much for Bernie Sanders' revolution, I have to say. My daughter is still a believer, to be honest. We still have this conversation. She still thinks there's a chance that Bernie Sanders is going to be president. (laughs) So... I don't think so. I think they're going to prop up Hillary Clinton or produce a clone because the bankers are going to get what they want no matter what. You're listening to Lonnie Clark. This is the Age of Fission radio show. Thank you for joining us. Today is Friday, August uh, 26th. That's the date, 2016, and this is call-in Friday. Our phone number is 718-717-8296. The last few weeks when I was live, I actually uh, asked Dana Dernford to join us. I did not have a chance to connect with him this week, so I didn't want to just spring it on him this morning and say, hey, be on the radio show with me. So, Dana, if you're listening and you want to call in, please do join us. The phone number is 718-717-8296. Otherwise, I'm going to keep talking about what is on my heart. And what is on my heart is just the lack of action. There's no action. So this is what we're doing here in our little town of Eugene. Uh, Day 2000 is coming up on the Fukushima meltdowns. They started two thousand days ago now when it happened i believed our president when our president told us everything was fine we didn't have to take any extra precautions we were handling it i remember looking at the uh fire tanks and the the news reporting that they're pouring it in from the ocean because everything had collapsed and i was like wow they're so ingenious thank god they're taking care of it i know nothing about science or minimal It's obvious by many of my statements. I live on an intuitive level, to be honest. But 
it is obvious, intuitively speaking, that Fukushima is the worst catastrophe that has ever happened on planet Earth and made magnitudes worse by the arrogant, malicious battery of the scientific community who refuses to look at the real science. It is malicious genocide. 28 dolphins and four sea lions washed up dead in Lambayeque, Peru. Again, I mean again and again, we are seeing our brothers and sisters in the ocean being killed. It is outrageous. And yet, you know, what we're hearing, oh, well, we got to prepare for the coming crash, and you have to be prepared, and you need to have a plan. Really, what's going to be your plan when there's no food on the planet? What's your plan? What's your plan when we can't grow food, when we plant fruits and vegetables and they don't flower and they don't produce any decent vegetables? I actually had a squash plant in my garden yesterday, and I've been growing like this one squash, I had tons of flowers on it. One squash produced a piece of fruit. And it actually looked, it's looking, it looked really weird. I bent down to look at it yesterday and it just kind of fell off the vine. It's got all bumpy. Instead of being a nice smooth yellow squash that it should be, it's a bumpy off yellow color that was like super peculiar. Now, is that caused by radiation? I don't know, but I'm telling you what. You know, my backyard had very little strawberries this year. And I have a whole little strawberry patch. No squash have come up. I mean, you know, we're gonna, I guess maybe we're just going to have to learn to eat different foods. We're going to have to figure out what other foods that we can eat because we've been sort of convinced that there's only like a certain set of foods and we throw things out that are perfectly edible, you know. Uh, in the West, especially in America, we have been trained to be excessive and wasteful and not believe that we know how to live and believe that we need these major corporations to sell us a product in order to keep ourselves healthy and safe, which is probably the farthest thing from the truth that we could possibly think of, you know. Um, I, I'm actually completely dumbfounded. I'm going to share with you something that's pretty interesting because I just discovered it, you know, talking about being able to take care of yourself I found a formula that's 50%, what is it, turmeric, 50% coconut oil. You mix it together and you brush your teeth with it, and it whitens your teeth. My dentist was astounded how much healthier my gums and my teeth are now when I went back and got this checkup, and I'd only been using it for three or four weeks. Now, it does make your sink yellow, so you're going to have to wash it out if that's like a big freak out to you every time, but you know what? It is so worth it. I mean, we know the healing effects of turmeric. These are the kinds of things that we have to do to help ourselves. And for me, that's resistance. Phone number is 718-717-8296. So here in Eugene, um, Theo, who calls himself Hippie with a Gun on YouTube, and Kevin Finnegan and myself are going to get together this weekend, and we're going to plan something. Uh, for day 2000 we we are not going to let this go by without it being commemorated publicly people cannot forget that there is an ongoing nuclear meltdown while the government of Japan wants to normalize it and make us believe that it's okay it's not okay folks it is an extinction level event that if we don't learn to turn it around it's going to kill everything on the planet I don't know if any of you saw that story this morning on uh, the Googles about Russia said that they have discovered a way to turn nuclear waste into energy. That sure sounded like what Scotty talked about on Monday. The phytoremediation, the electrophytoremediation, where they're going to draw all the radiation into the plant, bury the plant while it decomposes put something on the plant to eject the radiation, put that radiation into some kind of a container that will then generate uh, electricity. That is the plan. 
So maybe there are solutions to this, but in the meantime, it's like we just have this massive animal death, and guess what? We're animals. I mean, what's interesting is we have all these people dying all around the planet, and, you know, that's an interesting thought. Like, here we have mass animal deaths. I wonder if this lady, I mean, she has mass bee deaths lists, so she talks about the bee deaths. But I was, you know, it just occurred to me, I wonder if anybody has a list where we actually keep track of where people are dying, how many people are dying every single day in what part of the world, like we have this mass death list. I mean, that would be an interesting thing to see. Which cities in America and which cities across the planet have people dying of cancer? How many people actually die of cancer in each city? I mean, there is so much we could do, folks. I mean, you can listen to me ramble on on just throwing these ideas out there. There is so much work to be done. People need to get an education. We need to train our minds with, you know, how, what, how we understand science and break against it. I don't know if many of you follow Dutch Sense on YouTube, but, man, I do. He actually reports on earthquakes and things like that, and he has proposed a theory that is exactly opposite to what we've been trained to think about on how earthquake faults work. And it actually kind of makes sense, and he tracks it, and his predictions are pretty accurate based on the things that he says. So a lot of what our assumptions are in terms of what we are believing in our culture and in our current environment to me, it's apparent a lot of it is just a bunch of hooey. Like, we have just been sold a really uh, seriously bad set of assumptions. And why did we believe it? Because our normalcy bias. Once again, we have a normalcy bias. Like us, when we went out to the coast, man, was it so beautiful at the coast last Sunday? But there was really, like, very few birds and we looked around, we dug in the sand to try to find sand crabs. Found two. That's it. That's why there was no birds, because there's no sand crabs and no creatures out there to eat. Now, the rocks were covered with clams, or I don't know what you call them. Uh, I think they were clams of some type of thing, or those little black clammy things. You can tell I'm not a fisherman. Um but that's because the entire coastline, there's warnings that tells people, don't eat it. You can't eat it. So um, I just opened up the mass bee deaths. Let me see what this looks like. Oh, my gosh. This is stunning. Mass bee death list. June 2016, 53% of honeybee die-offs in Comarca Luganera in Mexico. May 2016, millions of honeybees have died in Santander, Colombia. So you see the pattern here, folks? These animals are going south. Why are they going south? They're going south because there's radiation in the north from day 2000 of freaking Fukushima. Wow. Wow. 100,000 bees found dead in Biazon, Italy in April. In April, hundreds of thousands of bees suddenly die in Tai Mangunui, Manguni in New Zealand. March 2016, millions of bees died in Italy. So that's Italy in April and millions of bees died in Italy in April. February, massive bee die-off in the past two weeks in various parts of Spain. February, 50% die-off of bees during past three years in a large bee farm in Arkansas, America. 50% die-off. Wow. So, you know, they say when the bees go, that's a very serious thing because the bees are our little friends and we need them. In the meantime, we're filling our brains with uh, Hillary Clinton's murder escapade and Donald Trump's child rapes escapades and his perversion for his own daughter. I mean, like, this is the state of America. Our elected officials 
reflect our lack of action. We have people on television pretending like Hillary Clinton is a rational human being, and anybody who talks about Seth Rich being murdered to protect the election fraud is just off the charts. It's really Julian Assange's problem, because he's the one who leaked it. Forget the election fraud. It's the leaking of the information that they knew they were doing it. Forget the election fraud, right? And let's forget that Don, Donald Trump has got, is in court over some woman suing him for, you know, raping her as a 13-year-old child. Which, by the way, the media is ignoring because I've heard that story last year. It came up last year in England. That was uncovered last year. They're ignoring it because Bill Clinton happened to be with him on one of his escapades. So that whole child prostitution ring is very real. And it is for the elites, and they are, you know, they're going to do what they want to do. They're not giving it up. Just like everything else, they're not giving it up. I mean, I do not know what it's going to take. I When? When are we going to decide we're going to stand up and come out in the streets? I encourage people out there to actually create some type of a protest, public protest, in the streets, either next weekend, this weekend, or on September 1st. You know, I get it, September 1st is a Thursday, not the most opportune day for most people who have to earn a living to go out and protest. But maybe that is a good day. Go out at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock when people are out there and remind them, uh, guess what, folks, your children are being poisoned right this very second from Fukushima, and it's a lie. Radiation from Fukushima is not like a banana, and it is not being, cu it is not being taken care of, and it is not, a, you know, something to be ignored. We have a responsibility to our future. To speak out about this. Fukushima changed the entire world, people. The world has been changed because Fukushima has not been stopped. Now, the Japanese might be willing to shut up and pretend like it's all okay, but it's not okay. I mean, yeah, I get it. They can't get off the island. Where are you going to go? What are you going to do? And if you're devoted to that culture, you're going to hang on to every last shred. Because they look at what happened after World War II. Yes, they know they've had many people injured. And they know they have genetic mutations. But what the subtlety of Fukushima harm. I mean, we have mass animal deaths. And the world still looks normal. Fukushima doesn't have any birds. I'm sure. A year and a half ago, I read an article that said, I think it was 2013... Twelve birds left in Fukushima Prefecture. Twelve birds. How many birds do you think there are now? Zero. Guaranteed. It's not decommissioned. It's not decontaminated. In fact, they've spread the contamination all over Japan. They're spreading the love. And now they're going to bring people to Fukushima and to Japan. They want to have opening ceremonies in Fukushima, folks, at the Olympics in 2020. As if that's a reality. What is it going to take? The phone number is 718-717-8296. You're listening to Lonnie Clark on UCY.TV radio. Today is call-in Friday. And if nobody calls in, it's just me talking, So, which I don't mind because I have a lot on my brain because this, I'm just like completely dumbfounded how this cannot be the number one story on everybody's heart. <clears throat> I mean, we have, uh, what, Progressive talk show radio hosts out there saying, yeah, it's a really bad problem. Next, let's talk about Donald Trump. No, let's talk about why the world is doing nothing, nothing about Fukushima. The world is doing nothing about Fukushima, folks. Day 2000 is coming up and nothing has happened. What is it going to take? I mean, we honestly have a responsibility to stand up and meet, even if it means you're standing in your little town with just all by yourself, stand out with a sign on day 2000. 
and actually don't stand out. Insist that somebody that you know come out with you and take a stand for humanity. Because if you can't get one person to stand out with you, that means you're not communicating the harm that's going on. I mean, seriously, look at the facts. Go to ENE News. In fact, ENE News just this last week had a story where the Japanese scientists are coming out and saying it is far, 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 far worse than what the Japanese government is telling us. Let me see if I can find that story. Hold on. Let me see. Do, do, do. ENE News. Let's see what this says. Uh, because it, we're just hearing about it in... Really? It's just like, huh. Astronomical amounts of radiation found in downtown Tokyo, directly outside the government building. Horrific readings where kids are playing in Fukushima. Extreme levels found where food is growing for elementary school lunches. Nuclear experts shocked, upset by discovery. This is where I start cussing. Oh my gosh, I have to say. It is completely annoying because that is where I really get very upset because it's, com you know, these scientists know it is, it is not, it's not an accident. He, discovery, discovery what, that they can't ignore it anymore after six years? <sighs> Maggie, let me see, let me read this because this was really something. Maggie Gunderson, this was on June 20th, 2016. This is a transcript from, it, I guess, uh, Fairwinds with Arnie Gunderson. The Margaret Harriman was the host. I know you mentioned Arnie Gunderson, the chief engineer at Fairwinds, and he said he measured radiation here too. Could you talk about that? And this is Maggie, his wife, uh, the CEO and founder of Fairwinds Energy Education. He's working with other scientists who are studying both Japanese scientists, the samples they took, and the U.S. scientists who are evaluating the samples. And they are finding astronomical amounts of radiation even in downtown Tokyo, outside of Medi's door. Medi is a regulatory agency over nuclear power. When he and others were downtown in Tokyo, they took samples right there in a garden, right outside the door in front of the doormat. And these are really, really high samples. Frightening because people walking in Tokyo will then be inhaling the dust. What was the film we saw from Japan that had the mothers who were in an area where the kids were playing and running in the middle school? Oh, that was a fantastic video. This is really shocking, folks. We know the radiation levels are horrendous because it's in a state of fission. It's getting worse and worse, and they are doing nothing. They are offering up the Japanese. They are just committing Harry Carey, honestly. That's the only thing, I, the only way I can put it. I, I have a client whose wife is from Japan, and they go back there regularly. And I'll be frank. I don't know anybody who that I know personally, and I think I know four people who have family members in Japan, married to them, and they go there. None of them, not one of them think that Fukushima is that big of a problem. They say, yeah, they know they're cleaning it up, but they do not understand the complexity of the gravity of the situation. And when I give them information, they glaze over. They glaze over. So this was a quote of the day that I posted to my Facebook page. It says, don't cling to a mistake just because you spent a lot of time making it. And that's what we need to do with the nuclear industry, folks. We need to admit that it is a failed experiment. Even if they do find a way to turn this nuclear waste into fuel, we've got stockpiles. We have got to stop making it. It is completely unnecessary, and uranium needs to be kept in the ground. And we need to stop. We, need, we must stop mining uranium. What do you think has caused the microencephaly in South America? Not Zika. The microencephaly in Florida? Not Zika. It's not Zika. It is uranium mining and nuclear pollution. 
Those people in South Florida, they're living near a leaking, an ongoing leaking nuclear power plant. And that is the dirty little secret of our entire country, is we have pollution and waste everywhere. That's why our people are sick and overweight. Our systems don't work. Our brains don't function. Because we have poisoned our systems, our bodies, our minds. And it is time for us to stop and to really remember the magnificent beings that we really, really are. We are connected to universe in a way unlike anything else in the universe because we're humans. Just like the dolphins and porpoises and the bees and the fish, they're connected to universe in a way unlike anything else in the universe. And for us to willy-nilly just disregard it and destroy it is ignoring ourselves and the magnificence of ourselves. It is important, and it's not just for our children. It's for ourselves, our own lives, our future, our DNA. The future of our planet is at stake. Day 2000 is coming up. We must, and post your videos to YouTube. You know, put them up on Facebook. Go up to Facebook Live. That was kind of an interesting experiment. We did that um, last, when did we do that? Last Sunday. It was the first time Kevin Finnegan was having trouble with his camera. He's like, hey, let's go to Facebook Live. We posted it up, and it was quite interesting. We got quite a few views. But the weird part about Facebook Live is you can't take the video and put it up on YouTube. It belongs on Facebook. best you can do is play it on Facebook and tape record it on your video screen and put it up. That's what I was did. I did that with Alex Cohen with So Much Water, who, by the way, is out of St. Louis, and I do hope to have Alex Cohen back on because I am very excited there is a group of young people in St. Louis who actually care enough to actively engage and change their lives, to demand the government clean that up, St. Louis and stop polluting our water and educating people about what clean water really means. We have about 15 minutes left or 10 minutes. Wow. I guess I can yap on. The phone number is 718-717-8296. You're listening to Lonnie Clark with the Age of Fission Radio Show. Today is call-in Friday and as you found out, if nobody calls in, I just get to talk for an hour, <laughs> which I don't actually really mind because I got a lot on my brain. We are living in a time when we're eating ourselves alive. And it's not, you know, I used to say that our elected officials, our country's eating itself alive. But, yeah, they are. But in the meantime, we're eating ourselves alive. I mean, it is severe, folks. We're not seeing it. I look at my grandchildren and I wonder how many of my great-grandchildren will actually be able to reproduce. And that's a very real thought. When I said that to my daughter, she thought I was being extreme. Again, we're being called extreme because the effects of nuclear radiation take 10, 15, 20 years to show up. Ask the people of Chernobyl. Ask the people of those areas living around there. I heard a story recently that said the Laplanders, you know, reindeer is their native food, and they actually have to have them imported because the ones around there are contaminated with radiation still from Chernobyl. And Chernobyl was a one-third core meltdown that was stopped within the first year of it melting down. I mean, thousands of people gave their lives. The Russian soldiers were quite brave. They went in there and gave their lives to stop Chernobyl. And what we have in Fukushima is exponentially worse. For 2,000 days, folks, September 1st is going to be 2,000 days of Fukushima. 2,000 days of three nuclear power plants that blew up. The fourth one was what the storage unit where they say that it, they, it, it's in 2012-13 when I was uh first woken up, there were stories regularly about number four listing, that it had sunk on one side of the building by three feet. They don't talk about that anymore ever since they put that pretty little container around it. TEPCO basically built some tents around those dilapidated nuclear power plants and have been uh, basically engaging the assistance of the mainstream media to perpetrate the lie that it's all cleaned up. 
that they're removing the rods, that it's all okay. They say they're removing the rods, and then uh, in the news, it actually comes out that they don't know where the corium is. If anybody looks at what's really gone on at Fukushima, there are no rods in there. I mean, if there's rods, I mean, there's constant fires there now. The plant is falling apart. It's in worse shape today than it was almost six years ago, folks. 31111. Fukushima has been spewing out excessively high levels of radiation since 31111 into the water, into the air. The Japanese government is making a mess of it, like the two year olds they are, just smearing the shit all over their bodies. You know, when my daughter was a baby one day, I went in and found her, like, smearing the shit all over her body on the wall on the crib everywhere that reminds me so much of Fukushima this is exactly what the Japanese government and the IAEA is doing and in fact my theory is that's why we're ignoring all the nuclear leaks going on in the United States uh, the 65,000 percent level of tritium that's leaking into New York City at an unprecedented level Indian Point Spent fuel cracked. Uncontrolled leaks of radioactive liquid have reached the Hudson River, folks. It's out there in the Hudson River nonstop. And we are doing nothing. We're just letting the people of New York just drink it up, shower in that stuff. Don't worry about it. Just keep it out of your eyes, ears, nose, and throat, and you should be fine. And anybody who tells you that radiation is harmful... They're just extreme. Really? While we have children who are autistic, can't think, can't survive, can't thrive, diabetes. Diabetes happens to be one of the first signatures of nuclear radiation pollution, of being exposed to high levels of it. It throws your entire system off. So this, there is, you notice in all of the global climate change things, we never hear anything about Fukushima. We never hear about radiation. It's considered a non-issue. Don't worry about it. I'm dumbfounded. I mean, I came into the game late. I bought it hook, line, and sinker until I guess how old was I? You know, 57? Like, for real. I lived right next door to San Onofre Nuclear Power Plant and thought it was an observatory for the military. And I considered myself an educated person. <laughs> so, uh, it's these come to Jesus moments, folks, where we're just going to have to wake up and decide we're going to be different. It's kind of like what I tell my clients, man. It is up to you. It's up to us. We get to own our lives and make it magnificent because that's who we really are. We have magnificent lives. We have a magnificent opportunity to be alive on this planet. And life is a gift. That's why they call it the present. Because it is a gift. And every single person that comes into our life is not somebody to be ridiculed. They are people to be appreciated and loved. Every single human being has a gift to give this planet. And when we recognize that and decide we're going to hang together, hold each other's hands and stand up against, what, there's 87 people controlling the money markets on this planet. That's, and billions of us are being subjected to nuclear and chemical pollution, having our natural plants being destroyed and turned into pharmaceuticals that they sell us at hundreds of dollars per pill. And if we're lucky we live in Europe, will they give us this crap for free? I mean, it's astounding that as a human species, we are just willing to, like, click our heels, sig heil, and do whatever they tell us, you know, walk into the little chocolate factory and come out rubber-coated. I mean, it is unbelievable. Well, I see we're at 854. I have not had a phone call, but that's okay. Because uh, I enjoy sharing my thoughts with you. I'm hoping that I have motivated some of you to gather up your friends and really honestly make people come out with you in the streets on September 1st to do an action next weekend or this to commemorate 2,000 days of Fukushima nonstop being ignored. We cannot allow the media nor our neighbors to ignore basically what is considered an extinction level event. We have got, and how are we going to prepare? 
How do we prepare? What we're going to need to do is demand science, demand education, refuse to go backwards. I mean, we're headed towards the dark ages. America is a dark and deep, deep, dark time right now. It feels like the dark ages in our country. And not just our country. I mean, for goodness sakes, a woman in France was forced to take off her burkini because it offended people because she was covered up completely. So men, again, are controlling women's bodies. You can't cover your body up on the beach in France because they want you to wear clothes like everybody else, which is basically nothing. So you're expected to expo expose your body so that men will feel normal. It's it's unconscionable how completely insane this planet has gotten. We could not have written this story. I mean, the things that have happened are just incomprehensible. We're ignoring a nuclear meltdown. Three simultaneous nuclear meltdowns. A spent fuel pool that basically got overstuffed and flooded. And in a state of catastrophic event, all the spent fuel, those rods are not in there. They said they removed them. I mean, the stories coming out of Fukushima are just incomprehensible. They just say whatever. Whatever. They don't care. You know, Arnie Gunderson going there six years later going, oh, yeah, it's really bad. It's really bad. You know, I'm sorry, but I, I you know, I, I have a hard time with that. Now, Tom Hartman getting Kevin camps on there going, yeah, it's, it's, you know, there's only an infinitesimal amount of radiation going into the Pacific Ocean. I, I heard him say that just last year. Shocking, but true. So, uh, I don't know what it's going to take. And I use this venue to rabble rouse and get people to get out there and to take action. Because we need you to. You must, we must have people get active. We need millions of people in the street. And Ray McGovern, who I talked about earlier in the show, said what the, he finds the most effective thing is get small groups of people on a regular basis in your community, take actions, and it gets noticed. So could you imagine if we sprung up like, I don't know, a million small groups across the country? where every week somebody was taking some kind of an action. I mean, imagine the force of that tidal wave that we could do on the scientific community and force them to stop being cowards and collusive, uh, greedy bastards while they destroy the planet. Because it is the scientific community who has betrayed us. They refuse to actually uh, decline their orders to not say it's radiation to understate the negative effects of radiation by 90%. They're the ones sticking to the 90% rule. Denying radiation causes harm, underreporting the negative effects by 90%. Convincing students, science students at universities that radiation is just not that harmful. Don't worry, we know how to handle it. Incomprehensible. Incomprehensible. I want to thank you for joining me today on the Age of Fission radio show. Um, we'll be back live. I was going to take a few weeks off, but I don't think I will. I don't want to break the rhythm. Uh, time is critical. So I really appreciate everybody listening to the radio show. Please tell your friends about our show here on www.uCy.tv Age of Fission. You can follow, uh, we have a playlist on YouTube on UCY TV. I also mirror every show, every podcast on my own YouTube channel, Nuts for Art. Everyone here at UCY appreciates you listening to us. It is important for us to break the mold. Day 2000 is coming up, folks. Figure out how you're going to make people aware of it. Put your courage feet on. Take action. And thank you for joining us. We'll talk to you soon. <music>
listening to you.